Hello everybody and welcome to Fire Force Season 2 Episode... What episode are we on? 17 I think! Anime review wrapping up the uh, the Hajima arc. Uh, but we all know why we're here. This episode was owned by one character and one character only. And we'll get to him later on. Uh, it was another solid week. First half was, you know, sort of wrapping up the incident. And the second half was sort of epilogue-ish with them meeting with Hajima and, uh, you know, sorting all that out. And uh, yeah, first half was really good second half you know just kind of had to happen i i've always said fire force has excelled at its fights and its animation and you know when they sit around to talk hey this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened you know there was one in season one where i was a bit like i'm completely lost but no this was easy to follow so that's also good anyway let's crack on with the episode see how everything went down and do this thing We go to Shinra and the boys. The boys are Karon and uh, Kurono, actually. So they're not the normal boys, but they're still the boys. Uh, they're still fighting the Natsuku monster. Karon is holding it off. And it's like, Shinra, you go do your big old kick thingy. And Shinra does go do his big old kick thingy. Not doesn't work, though. So Shinra instead tries to use the power of words as opposed to the power of foot to, uh, to calm down Natsuku. Uh, doesn't exactly work, but instead we get an Adola link where we see sort of... How this whole, I mean, what's up with Nadaku, basically? We see his past. Basically, his parents were, like, super, not demanding, but they expected to, they expected perfect grades. He was like, well, man, that one time I got a bad grade, and he got, like, 87 out of 100, and I'm like, boy, really shouldn't, I don't want to show him my grades then, because, ugh, you know. I don't think I've even seen an 87 out of 100, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and then, of course, then that happened again uh, at the place, the fireplace, what the hell is it called? Hijima. My brain farted there. And Hijima, you know, expects too much of him. And then that also added on to that was the uh, the Wrecker stuff. Was his name Wrecker? Yeah, Wrecker. Uh, just being, being a crazy psycho person didn't help matters, which, you know, is pretty weird. He kept replying that I can do it like a robot, which, yeah, you know, the, uh, the symbolism there is pretty obvious. To see, basically, he doesn't have free will. He just does what he's told to the best of his ability, which is kind of sad, really. Parents, it's fine to expect much from your children, but don't expect too much. Don't put the bear, the burden on them. Uh, it's bad if you do that. Natsuku is very not happy that Shinra was peeking at his memories, so decides like, oh, guess I'm gonna kill you all now, and does a giant orbital laser fireball thing. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's it's big. And he, he fires it, it's going to wipe out everyone if it nails, it's going to leave a crater. I think they said like 500 kilometers or something, so that's pretty big. Um, yeah, so d don't get hit by that. So he launches it, who's going to hold it back, who can hold it back, it's your boy, everyone's boy. He's become everyone's boy in this, this season, definitely this arc. It's Caron, he holds it back and he's like, I am the protector of the pillars, damn it. And uh, he's going to protect the pillars. Homea is watching from the side and she's barely apologetic. She's like, oh, oh well, clean up my mess, will you? And it's like, you're a, you're a dick, Homea. What the hell's wrong with you, you goddamn bitch? Like, bruh, what, what are you doing? Not not a fan of old Homea. I mean, that's the point. She is, we're going to get something that's going to be like, this is how Homea got to how she is. And it's going to be like, oh, now I feel bad for her. I don't want them to do that. I just want to hate her. Is that, that's so bad. Like, Karen's cool. Uh, just mostly just Karen's cool. Show's alright, but he's he's pretty he's basically brainwashed, so it doesn't really count. Karen sort of has free will still, kind of. Uh, we see how long Karen's been with Hormea, a long ass time it turns out. When Hormea was a kid, he was like looking through a notebook, presumably how to be a good parent, uh, who knows though. And she was like reading his brain, he's like, Stop thinking about me, you creepo and it's like, Oh, Karen feel bad for him. He though, in the present day we all thought, for a second at least, we all thought he was going to die, right? Like, he's the type of character that they could sort of get away with killing off. So we all thought, man, he's going to die. But no, he absorbs it and reflects it straight back up, hits the moon, the moon explodes. Later on we find out there's, been, there's a new crater on the moon, so that's Charon, really OP. But then he tumbles over and is like, I literally can't move anymore. Uh, up to you guys now, lads. 
After all that, Kurino realizes how close he was to just all the weak people in the world, or in the city at least, being being killed. So he's like, right, can't have that. So he pulls a sword and starts just slicing up the Infernal very easily. It makes me think he's been holding back previously, although it didn't really help too much. He, he basically pretty effortlessly defeats the Fire Infernal, like really, really easily. Tells Natsuku that he's disappointed in him, and Natsuku's like, don't say that, I'll get, I'll get better, I'll get better. However, though, that's not what he means. Kurino doesn't want him to get stronger. Kurino wants him to stay weak, because it's Kurino, and he's like, yeah, it's fine to be weak. You are just a boy, boys should be weak. And Karon says it best, I think. He's like, to 99% of people, this is really weird. But to that 1%, it's like, it makes a lot of sense. And it's like, it makes sense. But it's still really weird, like how Kurino is, is Kurino's messed up, right? But his messed upness is sort of helping uh, Natsuku in a way, which is really weird. Um, but it works. I think Karen also says like, oh, I guess he's the protector of, of the sick pillar then. Uh, which, hey, that that's a good way of looking at it. And they're like, yeah, okay, we'll leave him with Hajima for now. Uh, which is... And then they're going to skedaddle and Inka is like, I know your future, so it's fine. And he's all creepy as Inka likes to be. Why was she even there? She didn't do anything. Like, why did she even bother coming to the to the attack? Did she do anything? I don't think she did. Inka. Why? I mean, I guess that actually does make sense. If she doesn't need to be involved, but there's danger there, of course she'd go along. It actually makes perfect sense. Never mind. It's genius. And then we begin the long, long conclusion sex section. Jeez, words are hard. Don't demonetize me for that, YouTube. I said section. It was fine. I'd not monetized anyway. But you get what I'm saying. Um, they conclude, due to the attack and everything, Hajima are not connected to the Evangelist. So we basically just wasted four episodes. Was it four episodes? Was it only four episodes? Blimey, no. Maybe it was only four episodes. Crazy to think that. Um, they go see the president. The president is like, you've... You've done it now. You've gone and made a big mistake. Uh, I'm not going to do the tune. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Um, he's like, hey, you've made Hajime your enemy now, and that's not going to be good for you. So let's team up instead. And there's just a bit like, okay, let's let's t think about this logically. You know about Amaterasu, right? And they're like, yep, there's a person in there. And it's like, okay, you're not exactly endearing yourself to the 8th right now. They say it's necessary, basically. Like, all the people that are saved because of it justifies the one person that is uh but that is suffering basically and i don't want to say it but there is some some validity to that like you can you can see his point like i'm not saying i necessarily agree to it it's a whole other ball game where it's like were they forced in there or was it you know voluntarily voluntarily you know i think that's the deciding factor for me uh don't force people to be a power source but if they agree to be a power source it's fine it's basically what i'm saying um, uh, Hajima, want to make a second Amaterasu, Amaterasu, and Shinra's all like, what the hell's wrong with you? What are people to you? And then he's like, hey, wouldn't you give up your life to save 15 million? He's like, you're damn right I would. And it's like, Shinra, you're proving his point. Captain Obi, though, and also Vulcan busts in and like, hey, you can save more people by being alive, so how about you don't do that? And then Vulcan is like, hey, it's cool, I'm gonna build a power source that doesn't need a sacrifice, an even better one. And uh, then, you know, it'll be good and everything, which is nice. And the president is like, can you actually do that? Can you actually make that? And they're like, yeah, of course I can. I'm like, you have no evidence to back that up. But the president is just like, we will support you in your endeavor. Because we, I guess they don't really want to sacrifice anyone either. They would much rather just have a power source that doesn't require a human sacrifice. That's probably ideal. Uh, so like, we will assist you. And Shiro is just there thinking like, oh man, I guess the eighth are my protectors. Which... Yeah, probably. That's probably what the white clad were thinking, why they've left them alone, almost. Uh, which, hey, makes a little bit of sense. Uh, they're going to help Vulcan make his thing, uh, uh, Hajima. Then we go to Nataku, who's still a bit messed up with the whole, hey, I know you can do it, I know I can count on you thing. But Kurino is just saying, like, hey, please stay weak. And that makes Nataku smile, because it's like, oh, I don't have to be strong, you know? Uh, again, it's a weird relationship. But it kind of works. Sort of. Not really. But you got to get it. The whole... The whole... He's being crushed by the weight of the pressure. So Kurono's taking the pressure off. And it's like, hey, I don't want you to be good. I want you to be a bit crap. So I can beat the, beat you up, basically. It, again, very weird. But kind of works. 
It's it's a unique. We'll call it unique. That's a fresh. That's a good way of saying it. That was the end of the episode. As I said, it was pretty good. Um, apologies if my voice is going a, a little bit because it is. Um, but no, it was another solid episode. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, they go really quickly. Fire Force goes really quickly, and it's it's a bit sad, you know. I don't know how much how far through the manga is. How far the manga we are through. Words are easy, as I say. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering if we're going to get a third season. I'd like it. I'd like it quite a lot, actually. I think the author said that the manga was ending soon. So, hey, maybe we will get a final final third season. Or, you know, I don't know how long's left. I'll have to look, I guess. Uh, but that's exciting. Of course, we get to my favourite part of the episode. And it shouldn't be too difficult to guess. Of course, it's Charon being an absolute beast. Because, he, of course, you know, he's easily the, my favourite member of the White Clan right now. Kind of weird that Sho hasn't shown up in a while, but I guess after the last time they're kind of keeping him out of the battle, that would make a lot of sense. Don't want to lose him like they almost did previously. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, Karen's awesome. Karen is an awesome dude. I don't, it's weird, like, they teamed up and it felt sort of natural, but at no point during that was I like, oh, Karen's going to join the good guys. No, of course, he's, he's not going to leave the White Cloud. He's not going to leave Hormea, despite how absolutely insane she is. Um, it's just not gonna happen, so, I don't want Karen to, I hope he survives at least, I hope, at, at the very end, they're like, alright, I'm gonna become like a butcher or something, and I'm gonna cook some meat, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what he's gonna do, but hopefully, some honest living, let's go with that, him and, him and Hormea can open like a, 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 a food stall or something, I don't know, uh, anyway, Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and stuff for more reviews, that would help me out a lot. From the episode preview, it looks like next week we're going to be focusing on Iris, which is good because she, she, I mean, she's been out of the spotlight for a while. Give her, give her a little bit, give her a little bit. Um, see you next week, as I said, take care, and bye guys. Bye.